slide in and learn about the Amar Tech 1 frigate line. There are six frigates, plus the Imperial that you're flying now. They are the Tormentor, Magnate, Crucifier, Inquisitor, Executioner, and the Punisher. Here's your starter ship. It's barely adequate, but we'll get your fighting, mining, or trading career started. Fly it while you train your learning skills, then destroy it. Next up is the Tormentor. Many beginning miners fly it because it has mining bonuses. Any ship you fly will have some base bonuses. I highly recommend you take advantage of every bonus you can get, Rook. Out here, the small edge can make all the difference. I also recommend you learn the anchoring skill to keep your secure containers nearby for easy mineral dump. Tormentors get 5% bonus to cargo capacity and 20% bonus to mining laser yield per skill level, plus negative 60% mining laser capacitor use. Fit modules that take advantage of these bonuses. That's a good rule for most any ship. Got it? Note the dual mining lasers for fast roid extraction, lots of cargo expanders, and an afterburn to move to the next rock fast. We're done with the Tormentor now. Let's move on. We pure Amarians like our laser boats, but rocketry has its uses. In fleet operations, the EM damage bonus might help strip away enemy shields. Note the missile launchers. Use them to learn, since you have to learn missile launcher operations anyway. But train for rockets if you want to keep flying this ship. Rockets will set you up to use better hybrid ships later. Crucifier is a good electronic warfare platform. The ship is recommended for very specialized roles and isn't designed for solo combat. Fly the ship in support of a larger fleet, with your sole purpose being to disrupt the targeting of enemy vessels. Keep out of the range of enemy web fires. The ship is not hardened for direct combat. The spatial effect you see is a sensor booster running. Some pilots use sensor boosters to decrease target lock time or increase locking range. I encourage you to experiment with various EWAR loadouts. Remember, this ship sees little or no use as a ratting, mining, or mission running ship. Don't embarrass me or yourself by flying it like that, got it? Skills are your friend, Rook. Better skills will mean less reliance on modules like power diagnostic systems. For now though, a simple setup like this is good enough to jump into a fleet fight. Somebody got the bright idea to take a luxury yacht and turn it into a scout. Whatever. This fancy boat can fit a prototype cloaking device and probe launchers. Just the thing for sniffing out wormholes. The prototype cloaking device only works when you're traveling at sublight speeds. Your cloak is vulnerable. It will automatically disengage if you get within 2,000 meters of another object. You can't move as fast when you're cloaked, and you can't use your ship's weapons or certain other subsystems. You can't cloak the magnate or any other ship if someone has a target lock on you. The cloak's purpose is to help the magnate evade engagement. See, Rook, the universe is not a friendly place. You might be out at some distant moon looking for wormholes, and someone else might be looking for you. If you cloak, they will have a difficult time finding you. The magnate has a bonus to probe scan strength. I suggest you take advantage of it. I'm not going to discuss scanning in detail. But this is the view you'll be seeing when you use a magnate to scan. The spheres you see represent the range of your probes. They'll send telemetry back. Locate a potential target and keep scanning. Eventually, you can warp to the object and call in your fleet. See, noob? You actually can be useful. Study this basic loadout. The cloak and probe launcher are self-explanatory. Look in the low slots. See the coprocessor? This module compensates for low skills by increasing the CPU of the ship. This allows you to fit the other modules. Just like power diagnostic systems, you can eliminate the need for this module with better skills. 
No, you want to know why the afterburner and overdrives are on there, eh? Think about it. Do you really want to warp to zero on top of an unknown anomaly? Uh, no. Warp in at range and assess the situation. If you need to check out the area, now you can get around more quickly. Remember, your court mates are waiting for your report, so do everything quickly and accurately. There's always an argument at the bar about which ship is more versatile, the Executioner or the Punisher. Me, I say the Executioner. It's a cheap tackler, a good blockade runner, a decent scout, anti-drone sweeper, or my favorite, a vampire boat. It's one of the best ships to get into early. Its performance far outstrips the Imperior, and it's just a lot more fun to fly. Go fast in this frigate. Your defense will be to maintain high transversal velocity while you immobilize your target. This is called speed tanking. It's a defensive strategy that maximizes the natural advantages of a small ship. Let me explain that to you in words you can understand, pilot. The smaller and faster a ship, the harder it is to hit. Imagine how frustrated your enemy will be when they can see you whizzing around them, sucking their cap dry while their guns just keep missing. Uh, I just love the smell of Nosferatu's in the morning. Here's a beginner's loadout. A couple of pulse lasers up high will give you good punch close in. Fit multi-frequency crystals for extra close penetration. The cap recharger in the mids can be swapped for a cap booster if your energy management skills are low. There's an afterburner in this loadout because a micro war drive lights you up on enemy targeting system and makes you easier for them to hit. With a bit of skill, you can turn the ship into a vampire. Here's what that loadout looks like. 